Hey everybody, welcome back to Print and Play. And today I want to spend some time showing you the easiest method I've found for soldering header pins to boards like the Raspberry Pi Pico. Now, this procedure is exactly the same whether you're dealing with a Raspberry Pi Pico, an ESP32, an Arduino Nano, or even the GPIO on a Raspberry Pi Zero. So what you're going to want for this is the board that you're soldering the pins to, obviously, a breadboard, enough pins to fill all the holes on the board, some solder, and then optionally some flux or soldering paste. The first step is to trim your pins down to length. So what I like to do is just place the end one in the end of the board that you're setting up pins for, slide them all into place, and then dig your fingernail in, and there's usually an indentation, you can see them all along there, and just snap it off. And with any luck, I'm left with just enough pins to do the other side. Then we're going to take our board and holding the pins in the holes, we're going to line them up with the holes on the breadboard and just push into place. So the breadboard will hold those pins nice and steady while you get your soldering done. At this point, if you're going to use flux, you can go ahead and brush it onto the contacts. What flux does is make sure that you have a nice strong connection and it also tends to cause the solder to gather up on metal surfaces, avoiding bridging between the individual pins. Next, we're going to apply some solder to the tip of our soldering iron. And finally, we're going to go to all four corners of the chip and we're going to solder the pins there. And basically, you heat up the pin and you're going to push solder into it. And you want to make sure that it fills as much of the gap as possible in between the pin and the contacts on the board. Now, it's important to remember that you shouldn't try and work around the components as much as possible. Feel free to move the board around to give yourself the best shot at getting that solder into place. The other thing to remember is that you're heating up the component and then pushing the solder in. It's not a matter of getting uh, solder onto the iron and melting it and then letting it drop into place. You want the component to be as hot as the solder so that everything bonds together. And with our four corners soldered down, it's just a matter of doing the rest. Now, if you end up with any bridged pins, like here, often you can just heat them up and drag a little from side to side, and they're no longer bridged. So just go through and double check to make sure that there aren't any additional ones. And also watch for any spots where there are holes in the solder that would mean that it's not making a good connection. And that's it. You now have a Raspberry Pi Pico that is ready to be used in a breadboard. And as I said at the beginning of the video, this could be any board really. If you've got extra flux on the board, you can just use a Q-tip with some isopropyl alcohol to simply wipe it off. It'll dissolve no problem. And this stuff's non-conductive. Well, depending on which brand you get, all of them should be non-conductive. Uh, most of the new ones are non-corrosive. So even if you left it on the board, it wouldn't be a big deal other than the fact that it's a bit messy. So let me know if this tutorial helped you in the comments below or if you have a better way of doing this. And if it did help you, don't forget to toss me a thumbs up. And for more Pico content in the future, subscribe to the channel. All right, well, that's it for this one. But until next time, stay creative.